Hey guys, it's Robin and welcome to the Science of Self-Care. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite topic, which is chocolate or cocoa or cacao. In my world, chocolate is the perfect version of a superfood and I actually wanted to touch upon the term superfood because I think this is something that we hear a lot of times in media, but it's ill-defined and it does not, it's, it's kind of meaningless. Uh, but I think one theme among things that are often touted as being superfoods is that they are very nutrient dense and healthy across many indices from macronutrient composition to antioxidant content. Often if we see superfood on the label that immediately comes with quite a hefty price tag but there are many foods that may not necessarily be labeled as superfoods but still have extremely healthy properties. Chocolate is definitely one of those foods. It is packed with phytonutrients like polyphenols, specifically flavanol. This plant compound is actually thought to stimulate antioxidant production in our own body and it's thought to be the reason why chocolate consumption is connected to cardiovascular health, to neurological health. Research has shown so many positive benefits to consuming cacao. I think I will just insert a little list here um, and if any of these sort of spark your interest, go to my citations and you can find out more. In addition to a number of antioxidants, it also contains theobromine and theobromine is an adenosine antagonist just like caffeine, so it keeps you from getting tired, but it's not as intense as caffeine and unlike caffeine, it's actually a vasodilator, so it increases blood flow. So it's this compound that keeps you alert and blood flowing and is thought to be also the reason why chocolate has sort of some addictive properties, although there's no consensus that there is anything actually physiologically addictive about chocolate. But as a chocoholic myself, I will attest to the fact that when I'm eating chocolate, or in a period of my life when I'm eating a lot of chocolate, I definitely crave a lot of chocolate. There's also been interesting research about this connected to your microbiome and that often when we eat certain types of foods, the bacteria in our gut start to grow and get used to those balances of certain types of foods. And so apparently there's a connection between eating chocolate, um, having a microbiome that is used to receiving that chocolate and then really craving chocolate. So a cocoa bean or a cacao bean is actually a seed from the tree Theobroma cacao and this is also known as a cocoa tree. This is ultimately where chocolate comes from. So cacao and cocoa are usually powdered and defatted forms of this seed. I think the one distinction that is usually made between cocoa and cacao is that cocoa is heated in the processing of this powder, whereas cacao is usually cold pressed. However, it's not a strict definition. So for the sake of this video, I'll probably be using the terms interchangeably because it's fun to mix things up. Essentially, the powder from these seeds is what I think of when I think of chocolate. I do eat chocolate bars regularly, but they're always very dark, which means they have an extremely high cacao content. So it's not for everyone, but my absolute favorite chocolate bar is this Lint 99% chocolate. It is absolutely delectable. It certainly doesn't taste sweet, but I think it's a kind of akin to coffee. And for people who love coffee, you can certainly learn to love really dark chocolate. I think that there's plenty of chocolate bars in the 70th percentile that can be enjoyed by so many people. Often people will try one bar and dislike it and then they're sort of just checked out. But chocolate and chocolate bars and cocoa and cacao can have so many different types of flavors depending on where the bean slash seed comes from, depending on how it's processed. So just because you've tried a dark chocolate before and you haven't liked it, I would say keep experimenting because there is a dark chocolate out there for everyone. Everyone who at least likes chocolate, I know some people really don't, which I find so hard to believe. Another tip I have for enjoying dark chocolate is to eat it with sweet fruit. Often, what I do is I actually eat it crushed on top of a banana, and then you're still getting all the benefits of cocoa without the extra unhealthy refined fats and milk and sugar that are really not necessary to enjoy cocoa. Traditionally, cocoa was actually consumed not at all as a bar, but as a drink in Mesoamerica. Then it was a very ritualistic practice drinking this 
a very bitter, earthy drink. And then of course the Europeans came, added a bunch of milk and sugar and made it a sweet confection. But keeping this history of chocolate in mind, I also often make unsweetened cocoa drinks. You can have a really nice hot chocolate with actually no sugar at all. It can still be enjoyable. If you take, for example, some oat milk, heat it up, add some of this in there, some spices, some vanilla extract, some sea salt for taste. It's such a decadent drink that you really, I don't even miss the sugar at all. And of course, if you do want to add sugar, you can do so. I think shifting away from the mentality that cocoa has to be consumed in a very sweet context is really liberating and opens the possibility to all sorts of things. I think one way to ease that transition is to really think of cocoa as a type of coffee caffeinated drink. Obviously, it's much less intense than coffee, but when you go in with that mindset that it's expected to be more bitter and it doesn't need to be sweet, then you can enjoy something like this 99% chocolate bar without expecting that it's going to taste like candy and it really doesn't need to to be enjoyed. I would love to do more recipe videos including cocoa. Uh, I think it's something that most people can really healthily make a part of their diet and enjoy. It has so many wonderful properties um, physiologically, also mentally. So people should be excited to include chocolate in their diet, eating dark chocolate when they can, and, and if you really like chocolate in a sweeter context, then add some fruits. Banana and chocolate is a winning combination. I feel like I could ramble on about chocolate for hours, so I'm gonna stop myself to keep this short and sweet and savory. I hope you consider adding some more chocolate in your life. I always get so excited when a food is delicious and good for you, so that's maybe where a lot of my excitement around chocolate stems from. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.